What's going on, Buddy Fight fans? Uh, my name is Lucy. I'm the newest member of Team Burning Infinity. You may have seen my other deck profile, but I'm coming at you with uh, my Dungeon World Adventures. Um, the deck's not super competitive, um, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, super awesome deck. Uh, a lot of fun to play, and definitely should try it out if you get a chance. So as you can see, I got my awesome Konosuba Dungeon World flag. And I have... Uh, my buddy, Drunkard Mentor, El Quixote. And if you guys don't know what he does, basically when he link attacks with a Dragon Knight or an Adventure, I get a gauge and a draw. And it only activates once per turn. But it's still a great card. Next up, for size zeros, we play one uh, Archaic Weapon Pilot Dash. His ability is basically, if you have an item equipped, you can choose an item on my field, pay a life, and I can equip it. Um, and give it to the chosen card. And if it's in the item's soul, it becomes basically it goes uh, into the soul. And if it's in the soul, it get the card, get the item, gets penetrate, and it gets soul card. So super pretty. It's a pretty good card. Um, just a one of though. Um, next one of is Princess from the East, Sonia Nakatsuki. Basically, he, uh, this is a five one one. What he does is basically when I attack, I can grab a ninja or a set card from my drop zone, and uh, that's pretty nice. So I can grab, like, a, an Ibo in the drop zone, or I can grab even a uh, Nano Guardians, which I've done before. But yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Great card. Next up, one Gossip Burglar Paruko. She is a 4-1-2. And basically what she does is when this card link attacks, to choose a card from opponent's hand at random, and they have to reveal that chosen card. If the card's a monster, I deal two damage. If it's a spell, I gain two life. Oh, that's pretty simple. It's just kind of gimmicky. But um, I kind of like her at one. It's kind of fun. Next up, we got one Chivalrous Thief of Justice Makuro. What he does is when he attacks and destroys a monster, uh, they deal one damage. I deal one damage to my opponent. So pretty cool. And at the end of the turn, he gets the turn added back by hand. So not a bad one of. Um... Oh, he's also a five one um, five one one, which is good because a lot of the monsters in this have really low attack stats, which suck. So that's like a big thing, so wall decks, fuck it. Next, I play two Protector of Fate Tosuku. I don't really like this card, but there's not really anything much better. Um, basically, his call cost is pay one gauge, pay a life. Um, and I can counteract. Um, I can counter call him uh, if I'm at six life or less for paying his call cost. And when he enters the field, I destroy size two or less. Other than that, he's, he's alright. He's not the greatest, but he's not the worst. Next up, we have a card that I would play four of if this deck had better gauge gain. Um, and this is Dark Black Knight Gaito. Basically, when he uh, basically his call cost pay a gauge. He is a six one one. When this card link attacks an adventure, destroy a monster in your opponent's field. If you do, put that number of cards from the your opponent's deck into the drop zone equal to the destroyed card size, and you gain a life equal to the damage, and your opponent takes damage equal to the size. So basically, if I kill a size, if I kill a Size 2, they mill 2, I gain 2 life, they lose 2 life. So, pretty fucking good. I actually love this card. I love Gaito. Uh, because he deals with pesky soul guard character heroes, or cards. Because you just you destroy them with a link attack, they soul guard, and then you pop them with his effect. So if it's like a two if it's like a one card soul guard, it's dead. Um next up, the main searcher of the deck. Mysterious Fortune Teller Sophia. Um I tried playing without her. Um, it's impossible. This deck is just not consistent enough without her. And if you don't know what she does, basically call cost pay a gauge. She is a four two one. And when she enters the when she battles with another card, um, when it battles another monster, effects are negated. So if I link with her or I just attack with her, um, no soul card. So that's super nice. Um, and when she enters the field, I can discard a card, and then I can add any set card from my deck and add it to my hand. So this basically gives me Ibo, it gives me form a party, um, or gather allies. So other than that, like, she's fucking really, really good. Next up, the better Tetsuya. We play four Tempestuous Brave, or it's not, yeah, it's the Tempest Tempestuous Brave Gal. Basically, he is a 3 to one And when he enters the field, I can give any adventurer monster a crit. For the turn and his ability lets battle together when this card link attacks 
Uh, when this card link attacks with another adventure, I can pay a gauge and I can stand them both again rather than give it double attack. So that's really nice. So it's like, oh, let me just stand it. Um, so this card is literally like the best, probably one of the best monsters in this deck. Actually, it is the best monster in this deck, in my opinion, next to Sophia and Gaito. Uh, I thought about buddying him, but, uh, I don't really want to pay for the new, an extra gal. Next up, we got four of the buddy, Drunkard Old Man, uh, Drunkard, El uh, Drunkard Mentor, El Quixote. We already went over what he does. So I'm not going to go really go in depth about it, but still a great card. Definitely should be a four of. Next up, I play two Naboru. Um, I see PLCL. I've seen a couple decks play four of. Uh, my issue with him playing four of, and that's the same thing. Same thing goes for Gaito. I would play more Gaito and I play Naboru, but this deck doesn't have a lot of gauge game, which is a big issue because a lot of these cards are you know heavy on gauge. Uh, there's cards that are like you know pay a gauge, pay a gauge, and you know you don't have the gauge to do it. Um, but basically his effect is he's a, a call cost, pay a gauge, and if I have two or more adventures, uh, on the field, adventure, uh, cards on my side of the field, he gains double attack and one crit. Or he gets, or not double attack, he gets move and a crit. Um, and he already has a double attack, so. Oh, and another thing is when he, I deal damage with him, I get a gauge. So that's really nice, so, um, that can set off some of my impacts. But yeah. I play two, nan uh, three knights of Kono, nano guardians, basically call cost, pay a gauge, and add a card from my drop zone and put it in the soul. His ability is really cool. Um, counteract, if an opponent's attacking alone, I can discard a card and null the attack. So you have to link attack with your knights on the field, or I can just discard a card and null your attack. So pretty awesome. And he is a 5-2-5. Five, five. I'm not going over stats. I'm sorry, guys. Next up, we've got four Immortal Sword Sage Shosetsu. And what he does is call cost, pay a gauge, um, top card of the deck into the draw, or top tech into the soul. Um, all items can't be destroyed. Uh, items on my side of the field can't be destroyed by card effects. And when an item in the field attacks, put a, um, a soul for a monster from your opponent's field into the drop zone. Oh, that's a nice authority. Let me attack with uh, my item, and you lose a soul, which is really nice. Um, because this deck really struggles against stuff like that. <laughs> Next up, we've got three bonus quests. Um, people are probably like wondering why I don't play four of. Um, and here's the reason: this deck only plays eight size twos, so there's really no need for a fourth bonus quest. It would just be cloggy at that point. So nothing more really. There's no point to go more. <laughs> Next up, we've got four party formed, or form a party. Um, basically what this card does, it's a set spell, and when another set spell enters the field, I can set it to the drop zone, gain a life, and I can search for any adventure card for my deck. Yeah, so basically this is the item searcher that I, I use it to search the item. If I don't have the item, I grab Gao. Simple as that. Next up, I play two Ibo. Um... Ibo is probably one of the most broken set spells. Actually, is the first, the broken set spell of the deck. Um, if you could have more than one of this on the field, it would be kind of silly. Um, but basically, uh, it's a set and counteract. If during the battle phase, or I can basically um, during my attack phase, I can if an adventurer already attacked, which or I can just do it even if it didn't attack. Um, I can add that adventure back to my hand and play another adventure monster for the uh, for the call cost. So really fucking good for getting off big plays, going for damage and shit like that. Next up, we play the gimmick set spell, gather allies, or looking for a group called gather allies on the area. Um, basically, what this card does is it's a set, and I can act. I can play rock paper scissors with my opponent, and if I win, I get to call a adventure from my drop zone. Um, with by paying at call cost, so not a bad card, just kind of gimmicky. And another reason I don't play it at four of like same thing as Ibo. Um, you can only have one of them on the field per turn. Next up, play four. Quiescence of I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm not even gonna attempt it. Uh, counter basically. Um, I take if I was gonna take three damage, I take none. I can you know 
pretty decent. There's not a lot of nulls in uh, this world. Um, we do get a null come the Thunder Empire starter deck, though, so yay. Next up, we've got Four Shell Sana. Uh, basically, pay a gauge, null the attack, gain a life. Pretty simple, pretty standard. And then next up, we've got two Hidden Crossbow. Counter, destroy a monster uh, with 5,000 power or less. Or it's not 4,000. It's 3,000, my bad. 3,000 power. Uh, 3,000 defense or less. Um, that'll be replaced as soon as I get the, the new spell from uh, the Thunder Empire starter deck. <laughs> Can't grab it. Next up, we've got four Magic, magic Sword Aether Storm. Um, this is the main item of the deck. It's a 3-2. Basically, equip cost, pay a gauge, gain a life, uh, pay a gauge and a life. Um, all adventure monsters gain plus 1,000 power, plus 2,000, uh, plus 1,000 defense. And when an adventure card link attacks, um, um, for this turn, this card gains double attack. So basically, you do a link attack, it gets double attack. You can't really, it's like, it's, it, it's good. It's good. It's very good. Next up, we've got one for impacts. We've got one dead end crush. Uh, call cost, pay two gauge. You might only cost it, cast this if you have uh, three life or less, and you have an adventure monster and an item equipped, or weapon equipped. Deal three damage to your opponent. It can't be nulled. So basically, it's it's you know, pay two gauge, deal three damage. It's I've won a couple games with it, so it's I definitely keep it at one. Um, and then card I don't see a lot of people playing. Uh, I haven't seen anybody play actually. Is full strash formation, and I play that at two. Uh, basically, you know, I can only cost this if I have two or more adventure monsters on my field, adventures on my field, and there's no monster in the center. Or, and you have a monster. And I do have a monster in the center. Call cost, pay three gauge, stand all adventures. So, pretty simple. Uh, and then I get to, you know, it's pretty good. But yeah, that's it for the deck. Um, remember to like and subscribe, and yeah, have a good one.